Tortoise and Hare racing up the stairs. I'm a sucker for orchestral versions of pop songs, and this is one of my favorite John Denver tunes of all time. Beatles? Psh, joking, joking. See, I probably said this before, but I grew up on John Denver, so this song was just part of a medley for me. Let it be junk yesterday, all John Denver songs to me. Also, Jennifer Hudson is crushing it regardless of who wrote it. He was only six years old, but his plans to become the first koala bear in space were suddenly toast. Surprisingly, Wholesome YouTube Guy wasn't my plan either. It's the stage crew from your last show. They say their paychecks bounce. Buster Moon is out to lunch. All right, all right, all right. Great way to let us know Buster is going to be hard to love at times. Not quite move your clients' money from their pockets to your pockets hard to love, but still pay your crew, folks, even if you're a dapper little koala. Buster Moon descending on a busted moon, putting that little boy to shame. Okay, it's, it's not actually busted yet, but this opening with the orchestra warming up feels like a Disney castle nod, too. And he loves his theater so much, he knows all the sneaky ways around it. But again, really letting us know he's gonna be hard to love. Even the whale is wearing a little bowler hat. Adorable and dapper. And yeah, I know I already said dapper already. I'm a dapper fan, man. If I feel that I could be certain then. An adorable toughy gorilla singing the zombies? Eggsy never sounded so good. Where's your boss? Somehow this intro pokes fun at Zootopia, even though it only came out nine months after Zootopia, but rhino cops and criminals and bunny masks? Or maybe they're snowball masks. This intro is something else, starting with Buster and sliding us along to each different main character, giving each of them roughly the screen time percentage they'll have overall. Gosh, I thought you guys said you were musicians. <laughs> Boomer burn. I'm the lead singer, okay? Just stick to the backing vocals. Sorry, I, I get carried away. I'd like to think that Beck Bennett is a fantastic person, but he's also a fantastic voice actor because he is doing a fantastic job of making me despise him here. Happy birthday to you. Kind of a well-duh type win, but man is the singing in this movie magnificent. Tori Kelly showing off her chops with the happy birthday song is a serious flex. Aww. Man, love that Mina's family is so supportive. Never gonna complain about a little brew, Beck. Time out is a flawless record. A penny? How dare you! While Mike definitely goes too hard here, he's not wrong. If you've ever had a job that relied on tips, pennies are pretty much worthless. What do you smoke out of this? <laughs> Middle school teacher vibes. And a little Baker Street to reaffirm our love for Mike. Ha! Snake is using his tail as a hand. We can't afford any of this. I brought sandwiches. Even some of the squids in the background are shocked by Buster's audacity. Also, they're changing colors, setting up his plan for later. You okay? Yep, never better. Optimism. Ah, the winds of change. Clairvoyance. Oh. Let's go to work. Well, that's adorable. A little sad if you think about it. sad adorable. Here's some coffee. Where is it? Oh, I got a little thirsty on the way up those stairs. Miss Crowley is voiced by the director of the film, Garth Jennings. While Jennings has directed several fantastic films, he also has cameos in all three Cornetto trilogy movies, because he and Simon Pegg are friends, and I'm not jealous at all. The pacing is one of the best parts of this movie. We move right along into the auditions through Beyonce's song. And each song they picked is perfect for each character and actor for that matter. Though I don't think there's anything Nick Kroll can't do. <laughs> and even some expectation subversion. He's so uncomfortable because a seal should be singing this. Come my lady, come, come my lady, you're my butterfly, sugar, baby. Really captured Crazy Town and Animal form here. Whole band. The fact that Shuby Taylor Hippo didn't get in is a travesty on par with me not being friends with Simon Pegg. So monumental. People say you're Humpty. You're really funny looking. The croc is nailing the Humpty dance. Rest in peace, Shock G. Like the wind. Checks out, a snail would love riding like the wind. And the two of us need look no more. Who knew Wes Anderson had the voice of an angel? But darling, stay with me. And after Rocket Man, we all know for sure that Taryn can sing, but man, was this a surprise. Okay, uh. Clever not to have Mina's audition song be Sia's Chandelier, as Sia has been open about struggling with stage fright. Off the stage, Helga. Go on, you're useless. And Mike still sucks, but he gets a pass since we know elephants are scared of mice. Oh, what is wrong with me? Oh. Wilhelm Scream, and I believe it was Robert Froster, perhaps Henry David Thoreau, who said, you can never go wrong with a fart joke. Plus, you can see him holding it in before, so that's called setup and payoff, folks. But you are in 
Oh, jeez, this is gonna drive me nuts. Johnny, get back here. You're in. Winning by technicality is still winning. Are you joking me? We're going to be spicy, no? Gunter has the level of confidence I think we all strive for. Whoa, easy on the J-pop stars. But also red pandas are the cutest. For the last time, Miss Crawley, I'm not going to fire you. The fact that Buster doesn't fire Miss Crawley, in fact, doesn't even get mad at her, gives him a few more points. He's not a bad guy, just kind of a clueless doof sometimes. Every day for 30 years, he worked his tail off washing cars just so I could buy this place. Just for me. Wow, sounds like a great dad. Am I seeing some sadness behind those eyes, Eddie? You know what's great about hitting rock bottom, Eddie? There's only one way left to go, and that's... Ah! Love the enthusiasm. Also, he's 100% wrong. I won't sell out. He's just the best at being the worst, and selling out is the whole point, so I don't know what he's talking about. Cause he just wants to sell out. Barry's always been our driver. Barry don't mind, do you, Barry? No. No, it's fine. Aw, Barry minds. However, Barry is dressed to the nines. Look at that tie, pants, suspenders, combo. All these animals are so dapper. When it comes in, we go, right? Darth Maul coming in hot with a gritty British accent. So there's actually a lot of conflict in this movie that starts soon, but I like that the majority of it isn't relationship conflict. Pig Offerman could try a little harder. It's a real bummer to not be heard. But it's also a bummer to be tired or so stressed from work that you can't give your family the attention they deserve. No real villain here. I'm not sure that's what Buster meant by dream big dreams, but a Rube Goldberg machine is a big dream. And if the singing thing doesn't work out, Rosita should definitely get an engineering degree. Lance is an artist, but I wouldn't expect you to understand that. You're right, I don't understand that at all. Honesty, the moves, the confidence, Gunter's really got it all figured out. You got anything in black? Black? Well, you, you wouldn't ever want to think you're going to a funeral? Just like Johnny. Cash. But I can't see anything. Don't you worry, Rosita. I have glow sticks. Well, of course you do. Pop star princess. Use this time to shake off those first day inhibitions. Buster can spin anything, using everything to his advantage. <laughs> Collapse shadowing. I am about to come into a very, very large sum of money. In that case, sir, you'll be wanting our platinum car. Remember what I was saying about conflict? It's a coming. Love that a full-size car has been adapted to work for a mouse. Not sure of the mechanics, but I'm into it. Are you in the show? Well, yeah, kind of, but... This is sort of poorly planned out. What if she didn't get in? But it's the thought that counts. Flashback hugging. I like to think that Eddie blended his two favorite scenes from Rushmore together, the pool scene and the kite flying scene, and this is what he came up with. Top five Cat Stevens song either way. Where I end up, where I think only God really knows. I guess he's gonna help me find my purpose in life. I thought I had one. Turns out it wasn't the right one or something, I don't know. Dale Doback has grown up a lot, but adulting is hard and I really can't blame him. Ashino Sume, Hijuni, Ni Dekusai. So apparently his pronunciation is a little off, but Buster said something to the effect of your routine stinks, you smell like feet or toenails. So yeah, you should probably get a better Japanese English dictionary, Buster. The silver flame. Again, forget singing, higher education is for you. It's a bad way to dance, you can't really codify it like this, but her brain is clearly meant for something more. I am not singing this. What's not to like? You're a female and you're a teenager. Well, I am neither of those things and I love this song. Carly Rae is pure fire. But here's my number. So call me, maybe. Like the Buster is fully aware of how much of a goober he is. He just loves performing. Uh, yes, that was very bad. Candor. What is Dang, going on Mom. here? Hi, I'm Becky. With the good hair? <laughs> <laughs> Love the sound of the quills against her door. The face cards have Prince John on them. You know, the lion one. <laughs> yeah. You know, I didn't come here for a fun chase scene, but I still got one. That's a shock jacket you've got on today. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Classic split screen fake out. Grandson and his ghastly little theater friend. Look at that, she remembers me. Ab Fab and Jennifer Saunders are iconic, and Buster is still ever the optimist. Nana's house is exactly what I hope all stars of stage end up in just a Pepto Bismol nightmare. I mean, if, if that's what they want. It's, it's gorge. And you thought Nana was just what Eddie called his grandmother. Nope, it's her name. I know it's just simple physics, but I love that everyone has to walk at their own pace to keep up, and Mike is in a full jog. This. <laughs> It's gonna blow her away. Yeah. More clairvoyance. Love a good match cut. Up, oh, stand back. Moody teenager coming through. Look, Seth MacFarlane really sells how much Mike sucks, but he wasn't wrong. You are way better off without that total super jerk dinkelsplat. Gunter's got everyone's back. There should be some gum or some candy in there somewhere. Just help yourself. Aw, mom's gonna mom. Got nothing in my brain. Are you okay? Oh, yes, I'm fine. Thank you. <laughs> how are you? 
cartoon consequences. Johnny caused that accident. Ingenuity. Wow, animal prison kind of looks like human prison. I wonder if their 13th Amendment allows prisoners to be exploited. How did I end up with a son like you, eh? You're nothing like me. Which is technically a compliment. It's all the little moments in this movie that I really, really love. Miss Crawley spinning in her chair, Ash's glower when Gunter is looking for backup as she pops her bubble, the way the llamas are dancing in the background of the club scene. Ah, Cindy Lauper's true colors setting up Rosita's true colors about to come out. <laughs> Fun detail for her to know the words. The lady in aisle six, that was awesome. Agreed. Senor Coconut's version of Around the World is worth the price of admission. I mean, he's not a bad guy, but Nick Hogerman definitely doesn't pay enough attention to his wife or kids, so come up and do what you love, then you'll be great because you won't be afraid anymore because you'll actually be doing it. <laughs> that sounds so stupid, but it's actually pretty great advice. Kind of a fake it till you make it. You nervous? Are you kidding? <laughs> I'm absolutely terrified. Even if he needs to tell himself. Moon's got my money. Is it weird that Mike makes me dislike Seth MacFarlane? Feels unfair, but I, I can't help it. Flashing Lights is a jam. It was in GTA 4, so you know it's top notch. This is the first time we get to see Buster's vision actualized, and even though it's all a result of saving money, it's freaking awesome. You know, the glass floor and walls filled with thousands of gallons of water was ill-conceived, but it really seems like it only cracked because the bear smashed it with his bat. Still doubt it's passing OSHA standards. Yeah, well, come up in, Seth. Man. Golden Slumber is a pretty melancholy song to begin with, but it's really crushing now. None of this is okay. At least we're all in one piece. Aw, even Ash learned some optimism from Buster. Ha, <laughs> Parrot Harold. <laughs> Look, I know this is supposed to be rock bottom, but this is a high point for us, the viewers. A definite wife win. And at least Eddie knows how to have fun with it. Overplayed and overcovered as this song is, Leonard Cohen and Jeff Buckley are always wins, right? Why don't koalas wear speedos in general? It's pretty dang adorable. Some say he's a Johnny with the frontside flip first try. Bunch of bumbling amateurs attempt three stage this show. Shuby can't catch a break. Under and a rebuilding montage set to under pressure is the fastest way to exhaust Mrs. Crowley. Also, Queen is always a win. Yep, been to plenty of hardcore shows where it was pretty much the bands and their partners. And me tearing that pit up. So when the theater was in its heyday, they had a full moon. Under Buster, it was a crescent, and now it's broken pieces stuck back together. I go one too many days. Another testament to Buster's desire to just entertain people. He didn't intend for the show to be a comedy, but since everyone is having fun, he just rolls with it. Did they, did they improve T-Swift? Is it possible? I think it is. I mean, if anyone could, it's June Carter Cash. I brought this up in a few other movies before, but I really like that they don't over-anthropomorphize the animals, I guess. Rosita still looks like a pig. She doesn't have that classic hourglass figure that they'd like to give female animals sometimes. All right, swine husser pig, you've won me back over. Ron Swineson? All right, piggy power! Gunter, you supportive sweetie. I'm still standing better than I ever did. And I like to make the joke that X was X's audition for X role, but like, come on, he played Elton John four years later. And this is Julia's favorite song in the movie, so wife win number two. We stand Elton John, what can we say? Parenting win. Nice touch to show Ash looking confident getting ready during a song about getting over a crappy relationship. And even if the lyrics don't line up perfectly for Johnny's situation, he is still standing after his dad let him down. There's always something to be said for an original pop rock song written for a movie, meaning that it's the first time the audience is hearing it and it being an immediate jam. Unbelievable. And Scarjo, your voice. I mean, your Tom Waits cover album is actually pretty underrated, but who knew you had those pipes? Cowsers. Seriously, she's not even that good. Ha, just realized Becky saw her glasses get thrown into the crowd. <laughs> and even though the show is fantastic, it's not without its hiccups. I did it my well, he did. That song kills anyone who sings it. And saw it through. Hugging. Man, that's some showmanship and commitment. Mikey Mouse moved on a magical mic. As an old world guy, it makes sense that Mike would have more respect for a Stevie Wonder song. See, what did I tell you? He did. 
Mariah Ng to literally bring down the house. Aw, Nana finally hugs Buster. So even more hugging. I do not even think of embracing me. Time-lapse rebuilding is the slowest way to make me realize, I don't know, that this might be a Jennifer Hudson song now. For a movie that mostly relies on well-known pop songs, it's two for two on the killer originals. Also, Stevie Wonder and Ariana Grande, solid gets on both accounts. Sing, a movie where animals sing. It should be lame and boring and cringy, but it's super duper fun and also really rough at times and emotional. And even though you think you're gonna hate Matthew McConaughey at first, he really grows on you. And for some reason, I thought Ash was played by Rashida Jones for the longest time, but it's Scar Jo. And Taron Egerton is fantastic. And am I rambling? Anyway, a few more fun details I found were the minions making the illumination sign say minion. There's a background romance happening between Ash and Johnny. Me. Maybe. Apparently the tortoise that was racing the hare in the beginning did something illegal. That goat is voiced by Edgar Wright. Yeah, sure. The egomaniac frog hiding the set list from his bandmate. And I generally love all the little animation details, like the way the concrete absorbs the water from Buster. Even all the stickers and posters that reference in-universe stuff. Then you know, koala and a speedo. There's a great story and the messages are solid. Buster and Johnny both deal with living up to and escaping their father's shadows to be their own men. Mina pushes through her fear to unleash her talent. Rosita tries to find a home life slash passion balance. Ash leaves a toxic relationship to make it on her own. Gunter, Gunters, and Mike? Well, Mike is a jerk because some people are just egotistical jerks. They said I'm an intolerable egomaniac. I don't even know what that means. And some of them get eaten by bears, which explains why he isn't in the sequel. And I'm pretty excited for the sequel. That's it for this year. Thanks for coming along on this journey of movie celebration. Just to put your mind at ease, the first video when I come back at the end of January will be this. You get it? You know it? Good. Love you. Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. Dumpy, 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 dumpy